Welcome to Technophilia, a show where we bring you the top stories from the world of science and technology. So let's discover what's concocting there. As battery technology has proved to be vital for our transition towards better and cleaner technologies, scientists have been continuously researching ways to perfect this technology. In this quest for the perfect battery, scientists have two primary goals, to create a device that can store a great deal of energy and to do it safely. Thus, solid-state lithium-ion batteries have gained much attractiveness as unlike many other batteries which contain liquid electrolytes and are potentially flammable, solid-state lithium-ion batteries consist of entirely solid components and hence can offer an enticing combination for higher safety and increased energy density. In this regard, Professor Linda Nazar from the University of Waterloo along with her group of graduate students and international collaborators has discovered a new solid electrolyte that offers several important advantages. This electrolyte composed of lithium, scandium, indium, and chlorine conducts lithium ions well but electrons poorly, a combination essential to creating an all-solid state battery without significantly losing the capacity for over a hundred cycles at high voltage, above four volts, and thousands of cycles at intermediate voltage. The chloride nature of the electrolyte is key to its stability at operating conditions above four volts, meaning it is suitable for typical cathode materials that form the mainstay of today's lithium-ion cells. According to the professor, the main attraction of a solid-state electrolyte is that it can't catch fire and it allows for efficient placement in the battery cell. We were pleased to demonstrate stable high-voltage operation. Chlorine-based electrolytes such as this one are offering improved performance for solid-state lithium-ion batteries. As current iterations of solid-state electrolytes focus heavily on sulfides which oxidize and degrade above 2.5 volts, therefore they require the incorporation of an insulating coating around the cathode material that operates above 4 volts, which impairs the ability of electrons and lithium ions to move from the electrolyte and into the cathode. While Nazar's group wasn't the first to devise a chloride electrolyte, the decision to swap out half of the indium for scandium based on their previous work proved to be a winner in terms of lower electronic and higher ionic conductivity. One chemical key to the ionic conductivity lay in the material's crisscrossing 3D structure called a spinel. The researchers had to balance two competing desires, to load the spinel with as many charge-carrying ions as possible but also to leave sites open for the ions to move through. While drawing an interesting analogy, Professor Nazar state, you might think of it like trying to host a dance. You want people to come but you don't want it to be too crowded. Thus, an ideal situation would be to have half the sites in the spinel structure be lithium occupied while the other half remained open but creating that situation is hard to design. In addition to the good ionic conductivity of the lithium, she and her colleagues needed to make sure that the electrons could not move easily through the electrolyte to trigger its decomposition at high voltage. While trying to explain it more simplistically, she said, Imagine a game of hopscotch. Even if you are only trying to hop from the first square to the second square, if you create a wall that makes it difficult for the electrons in our case to jump over, that is another advantage of this solid electrolyte. According to her, it is not yet clear why the electronic conductivity is lower than many previously reported chloride electrolytes, but it helps establish a clean interface between the cathode material and solid electrolyte, a fact that is largely responsible for the stable performance even with high amounts of active material in the cathode. Meanwhile, a chemical engineering PhD student at the same university is building a smart cloud-based battery management system with a focus on lithium-ion batteries. As lithium-ion batteries are extremely prevalent, found in everything from household electronics to electric cars, to ensure the battery technology functions properly, batteries in most devices are connected to what's known as a battery management system BMS. The BMS is typically the brain of the battery. It controls and optimizes the way the battery charges and discharges and ensures system safety during operation. For example, a reliable BMS is a critical component in electric vehicles. There, it's communicating with the motor, it's communicating with the driver and the brain of the car as well. 
Although they're an important step in battery innovation, today's battery management systems aren't perfect. They require frequent calibration and cannot store a large amount of battery data. That's where the cloud comes in. Using cloud platform for battery management will allow us to have a one-size-fits-all BMS with better battery algorithms. The BMS's universality is an important innovation and cloud technology will allow us to store seemingly endless amounts of battery data. The researcher explains that nations have realized the critical role vehicles play in conquering climate change. Thus, in pursuit of cleaning the environment, the automotive industry will be revolutionized. Battery-related advancements will be more important than ever before. The researcher is optimistic and states, I have always called this era the renaissance of energy innovation and believes advancements in energy storage systems will pave the way to a cleaner, more energy-efficient society. Speaking of clean energy, engineers at the University of Delaware have developed a game-changing technology to effectively capture 99% carbon dioxide from air using a novel electrochemical system powered by hydrogen. This significant advance for carbon dioxide capture could bring more environmentally friendly fuel cells closer to the market. Fuel cells work by converting fuel chemical energy directly into electricity. They can be used in transportation for things like a hybrid or zero emission vehicles. Traditional fuel cells used today are acid-based, but these researchers have been working on an environmentally friendly alternative called hydroxide exchange membrane HEM fuel cells. However, the major drawback of HEM fuel cells, which has kept them off the road, is that they are extremely sensitive to carbon dioxide in the air, as it makes it hard for them to breathe. Thus, this defect quickly reduces the fuel cell's performance and efficiency by up to 20%, rendering the fuel cell no better than a gasoline engine. This group of scientists has been working on this problem for around 15 years and a few years back realized that this disadvantage might actually be a solution for carbon dioxide removal. The paper co-author says, once we dug into the mechanism, we realized the fuel cells were capturing just about every bit of carbon dioxide that came into them and they were really good at separating it to the other side. While this isn't good for the fuel cell, the team knew if they could leverage this built-in self-purging process process in a separate device upstream from the fuel cell stack, they could turn it into a carbon dioxide separator. It turned out that their approach was very effective. They captured 99% of the carbon dioxide out of the air in one pass by creating the right design and right configuration. To achieve this, they embedded the power source for the electrochemical technology inside the separation membrane. The approach involved internally short-circuiting the device, and by using this internal electrically shorted membrane, they were able to get rid of the bulky components such as bipolar plates, current collectors, or any electrical wires typically found in a fuel cell stack. By doing so, the research team ended up with an electrochemical device that looked like a normal filtration membrane made for separating gases but with the capability to continuously pick up minute amounts of carbon dioxide from the air like a more complicated electrochemical system. In effect, embedding the device's wires inside the membrane created a shortcut that made it easier for the carbon dioxide particles to travel from one side to the other. It also enabled the team to construct a compact package capable of filtering great quantities of air at a time, making it both effective and cost-effective for fuel cell applications. Their early prototype spiral device is about the size of a 12-ounce soda can, capable of filtering 10 liters of air per minute and scrubbing out 98% of the carbon dioxide. The researchers say that if scaled for an automotive application, the device would be roughly the size of a gallon of milk. But the device could be used to remove carbon dioxide elsewhere too. For example, the UD patented technology could enable lighter, more efficient carbon dioxide removal devices in spacecraft or submarines where ongoing filtration is critical. Moreover, they also state that since the electrochemical system is powered by hydrogen, as the hydrogen economy develops, this electrochemical device could also be used in airplanes and buildings where air recirculation is desired as an energy-saving measure. All in all, they are optimistic about the application, saying that they have a long-term roadmap for this. 
These are not the only researchers working on removing carbon dioxide from the air. Scientists at Hokkaido University have developed a method that has the potential to help recycle waste carbon dioxide while also producing molecules useful for drug development. In addition to the ever important demand for carbon neutrality, chemists are increasingly interested in using carbon dioxide in synthesis since it is abundant, inexpensive, relatively non-toxic and renewable. However, the reaction Activity of carbon dioxide is relatively low. To overcome this, the research team utilized an electrochemical method in which an electron is added to either the carbon dioxide molecule or to the other molecule in the solution, making it far easier for them to react with each other. This work marks an especially large breakthrough since carbon dioxide is used to carry out a traditionally difficult type of transformation with unprecedented efficiency. Where certain conditions are met, electrons can be shared between many atoms in a molecule by what is called an aromatic system. These systems are especially stable and difficult to break, but this new method can de-aromatize or break these stable aromatic systems by adding carbon dioxide to the molecule with the help of electricity. This process has the potential to both recycle carbon dioxide and produce high-value added dicarboxylic acids from simple starting materials, solving two problems at once. Researchers involved in the study attribute the rapid development of this new process to their strategy of first performing computational analysis that informed their experimental choices in the lab. As said by the team lead that significant research time is saved because a computer can reliably predict the feasibility of the reactant structures and possible reaction pathways. Overall, it seems that the battery technology is heading towards a bright direction with a focus on clean energy and the quest for the perfect battery might soon be fulfilled. Do let us know what are your thoughts on this in the comments.